y'all, Russ here Beer TV. Welcome. Check it out. That's Lake Mead over there to the right. We're cruising around uh, the big lake. We're actually going to go all the way up to a Nevada State Park called Valley of Fire. And it is one pretty place. Actually heading down to Vegas. But I thought we'd take the long scenic route. I have to do uh, some major errands in Vegas is the biggest closest large city with all the supplies and stores and all that so normally I come up here about once a month but I said today hey let's take a little side trip what do you think This place is called Redstone Rest Area. It's just a tiny little rest stop along the highway uh, that goes between uh, Boulder City, Highway 93, or where Hoover Dam, all that is. Round Lake Mead, cuts through Orverland, all the way over to I-15. It's a huge cutoff. You bypass the entire town of Vegas. Tons of people take it all the time. I drive past here a lot. I've stopped here once before. Redstone Dune Trail. You can actually hike here. They got small trails about a half mile long. Pretty day, kind of breezy, typical spring yet in the desert, usually means wind. There's one of the trails, I'm not going to hike it today, I want to actually get over the Valley of Fire. Let me see small parking lot, it's just pretty here. And they got some pretty big mountain peaks. Everything's named. All the different formations. They've kind of fixed it, fixed this up uh, pretty good. I don't remember all the picnic tables. They got a little barbecue pit here. Nevada does it right. Redstone apartments. It's <laughs> where all the birds and critters live, huh? Look at all the holes. Well, let's go take a closer look, huh? We say we'll cut through here. Check out the view. Yeah, look at these. It's all erosion, you know, over centuries and thousands of years, I'm sure. Birds get up in here and whatever, huh? Isn't this cool? Yeah, 
Anybody home? <laughs> Some bobcat jumps out at me. <laughs> Be nice and cool in the summer because it is hot. This is hardcore desert heat. It gets scorching here in the summer. That's like Valley of Fire. That is one hot place. Oh, look at this. Let me uh, extend the camera. That must be in the shade a lot. Look at all the green uh, moss and algae growing there. No sun hits it. There's our view. Pretty cool. Alright, miles wise it's not that far to drive around to here. Probably about a 60 mile loop from where we left uh, Highway 93 to come around. Maybe a hair farther. We're going to end up over an I-15. Once we uh, drive through Valley of Fire State Park. You know, I got the phone on here. I just had a thought. Well, I'll make a cool little stop. Everyone said, Thank you. How about we run down to Echo Bay and check out the lake, see what's happening? Water level of mead is really coming up, so maybe it'll look different. It's been over two years since I've been out here. During uh, 2022, I did the big loop. I did all the marinas and filmed them all. And the only one that was open was at MOA back in uh, near Highway 93 in Boulder City. We'll see. But Echo Bay is kind of out here by itself. We're not that far from Overland, which is a neat town, a lot of agriculture, farming there. There's also up the road here a ton of BLM camping before you get into Overland. Lots of people camp there. Alright, it's about four miles back in here. I can see the water from way out here. I'll, I'll tell you now, mead is up. How about that? Okay, here on the left, they got an RV park full of hookups. There's campgrounds here. This was one happening place. There used to be a lodge. It's all abandoned now. I think they even sell uh, park models. You can own a park model here in a trailer. Right there on the left. Yeah, that water's up. Look at that. Alright, and here's their o overlook. You can still see water used to be way up here. You can see it, it's still low, but nothing like two years ago. Up here they got a little store and stuff. You can buy fuel here. All their maintenance buildings. But then that lodge is up. Oh my goodness, they tore down the lodge. Wow, it's gone. 
when I was here two years ago, it was all abandoned and covered in graffiti. Yeah, right there on the right. When I edit this video, I will dig up some pictures from two years ago. But that's something. They tore that down, so yeah, two years. Probably two years almost to the month or so since I was here. But this was uh, the original boat ramp here. Water used to be up this high. We got to drive down there. I wonder if the boat ramps go back open. Let me get parked. That is this something that building is long gone. It needed to go. That must have been quite the demolition. Imagine back in the day staying here in the lodge and the water would have been right here. Here's a clip from my 2022 video here. There's the building. It was all abandoned and boarded up. Isn't that something? Well, the water is definitely up. I bet that boat launch is open. That's going to be amazing. We'll drive down there. It's only about a half mile to get down there. Yeah, a few clouds rolling in, huh? Wind's picking up. Wonder if they're going to put another lodge here. Big old empty lot now. Looks good. That building was all destroyed. All right, well, we'll go down there. Then I want to get on the Valley of Fire. It's kind of cool. I'm glad I stopped here. It's good to see this stuff getting cleaned up and the water's coming up. History, it's changing every year. Even at little places like this. You know, Lake Mead's been a water wonderland since uh, the late 30s, early 40s, after Hoover Dam was built. All these places start popping up. But we're saving history. One video at a time. That dust cloud straight ahead of us, that's a guy pulling a boat. He's flying down this road. I bet we're going to see a boat being launched. Well, let's check it out. Oh my goodness. The ramp is floating. They are launching boats. Two years ago, that ramp was way down, laying in the dirt. All the concrete was exposed in here. So this lake must have come up at least 40 feet, maybe. I don't know. I'd have to check online. They got it. all those stats online. It's up 40 or 50 feet. I'll be darned. <laughs> I'll show clips of what it looked like two years ago. This is 2022. This is the same ramp we just seen floating. 
you can see how much the water's come up. So I'm guessing a good 30, 40 feet. There's the van. Maybe even farther, but look at that. And this is what it looks like right now. Too cool for school. <laughs> Boy, I bet all these boaters are happy out here now. Good for them. Good for Lake Mead. It sure needs to come up a heck of a lot farther. I mean, there's still major problems, but good deal. All right, well, enough sightseeing here. Isn't it pretty out here? I mean, some people don't care for the desert. I love it. Especially today, we got all those clouds. All right, just a few miles up the road will be Valley of Fire. For more information on my travels, be sure to go over and check out my website, rvrtv.tv. Over there, you can sign up for my newsletter. Putting one out right now around twice a month. Plus, I got a little merch shop there. Hats, t-shirts, coffee mugs, cookbooks, journals. All kinds of cool stuff. Which hope support the channel and future videos just like this one. Coming up here to the beautiful Valley of Fire State Park. Right out here in the middle of the Nevada desert. Once again, it's RVRTV.TV. Okay, we're getting up close to our turn off here. This entrance station has been closed for years. I don't ever remember it being open. That sign there, it said St. Thomas. That's an old abandoned town that was uh, flooded out when they created Hoover Dam. All right, we're going to make a left here. Now, straight on would be uh, about four miles up the road where you can do all the BLM camping. We'll drive through the park here. There's a visitor center I want to stop at. Hopefully it's open. You know, a couple years when I was up ago when I was up in this area, a lot of the stuff hadn't reopened from uh, all of the COVID stuff. And we should start seeing more and more red mountains. Isn't it pretty in here? That big old cloud straight ahead right over the red rocks looks good. Ought to be some pretty good picture taken. Well, what do you say? We'll stop and get a shot of the sign here a second. Get out of the van. And welcome to the Valley of Fire State Park. Doesn't it look cool here? <laughs> Wonder why they call it Valley of Fire. Maybe because it's red. Those guys are taking pictures right out of their motor home. Okay, well, we say well, let's do a drive through. You know, the desert is green, a lot of rain this spring. 
winter and spring. You know what that means. Hopefully we'll find some uh, spring blooms here uh, later this month. In fact, this coming weekend, I think I might take a run through Oatman, see if I can find a few. Okay, they charge you to get in here for sure. And this is the first time I've ever seen this open down here. Normally, you just drop the money in a, a little kiosk thing. If you're curious, it's $15 per car to come in. They got a lot of rules. We're just going to do a drive through. I paid for just uh, day use. Out here is that elephant rock. There's hiking trails, there's picnic areas. Just all kinds of cool stuff. If you're in the nature, look at all the holes. What they call it back at Redstone uh, Apartments for all the birds and critters. Pretty though, huh? here we go there is a lot of people and it's early on a weekday morning what's up with that I wasn't expecting all these people normally I time this st stuff out pretty good they're up here getting pictures here you go welcome to the valley of fire When we go out the other side, we end up over on I-15, just uh, north of Vegas. So enjoy the ride. Well, I had to stop. Look at that cloud hanging over these uh, red mountains. That is a photographer's dream right there. There's your Kodak moment right here on RV or TV. Gorgeous. You can't make this stuff up. That's why they call it the Valley of Fire, just that red rock. We got perfect sunshine for it, perfect daylight. Well, 
if I remember right, right down the road here on the left should be another cluster of uh, formations. I forget what they call them. There is definitely a lot of people, a lot of traffic here. Here they are, right here. Pull in. Ooh, big tour bus. Well, we'll just get a few pictures and keep going. Visitor centers right down the road. That's why I really want to hit. Day use only, yeah. There, now, there are a couple campgrounds here with hookups, I believe. Or one of them has hookups. What we'll the look? Look at all the kids. Bus load. <laughs> kids heaven here, huh? Everyone's taking pictures. There's our cloud. We'll call that the RV or TV cloud. There are, there's even a couple here. Let me zoom in on them. They're having a wedding here. Look at that. They're getting their wedding photos. Well, congratulations, I hope. <laughs> Now these formations here are called the Seven Sisters. What a place to be married, huh, out here. There's helicopter tours, too, you can take out here. I think they come out in the evenings out of Vegas. One of these years, I'll have to try one of those uh, helicopter rides. And this whole region's famous for bighorn sheep. Okay, here's our visitor center. And wow, does that parking lot look full. Oh well, we're here. We're gonna go in there. Isn't this gorgeous here though? I keep saying it, sorry. <laughs> Where else are you gonna see stuff like this? Weather is absolutely perfect, though. It's almost getting uh, too warm, but that breeze is knocking it down. Okay, where's our cloud? There it is. Oh, there's your Kodak moment. Oh, man. Okay. Yay, made it. Nine to four is the hours here. The valley today. Talking about the geology here. You 
erosion. A complex fault. Looks like mountains to me. <laughs> Muddy mountain. Oh, yeah, earthquakes and all that. I guess there's earthquakes around here, pretty good ones. The Vanishing Sea. Okay. Well, 250 million years ago, there was an ocean here. You remember that, don't you? Sure, like yesterday. 550 million years ago. <laughs> How they know that stuff. Alright, it says, Welcome to the Valley of the Fire. A lot of pictures up there. We'll give the weather report local. Probably for hikers. I mean, you get out here and get walking, where it take you a lot of water. Because you can hike way back in these mountains. Gypsum people. Early native folks around here. Pretty good replica of what these. Uh, Formations look like. I call them formations, I guess, or yeah, gotta be. Geologist dream here. From public domain to public park, aha! People used to live here. Can you imagine that? There you go. Jump in your old Model A and go running around. Constructing all the roads in the park. Definitely a different time, huh? History. It's all about history, especially when they built Hoover Dam. That just changed everything here. Look at all those kids. <laughs> They're everywhere. There's busloads of them. <laughs> they must have a field day going or something. How cool. What's better to be a kid than coming out and climbing on big rocks? That's a kid's dream, isn't it? There's calcite. There's fossils. Petrified wood. More fossils. Heck, I'm a fossil. Quartz. You know what comes with quartz. Good old gold. Anyway, it's our visitor center. Kind of cool. Not very big. Oh, there you go. There's a big horn sheep. And his buddies right up top. There's one of those pink tour buses, vans. You see them all over. You see them all over the Grand Canyon, too. Well, our cloud's still there. It's kind of breaking up a little bit. Yeah, I'd never dreamed there'd be this many people here on a weekday morning.
But the weather's cooler and people still camping. Snowbirds are trucking back up to Canada. Still a busy time. All right, up the road here, there's a little turnout. There should be some petroglyphs we can find on our way out of the park. kind of on the northwest side. This is where the campgrounds are down here too. I've never been back in here. Okay, I see one of the campgrounds. It's off to the left and it looks full. And I was talking to a friend of mine, he said it's really hard to get a reservation in here. And there's day use for hiking off to the right. Restrooms, a lot of restrooms here, a lot of day use. And I think we need to go straight back here. And I'm cheating. I have this on the phone. <laughs> this should be... Yes. Off to the left. I don't know if you've seen those stairs. That's... Pretty sure that's where those petroglyphs are. Hey. This parking lot doesn't look too bad. Kind of flattened out out here, huh? Then the other campgrounds back down this road a little ways. Okay, make a left in here. We'll get parked. Yeah, desert's green, huh? It's been well watered all winter. Hopefully this weekend we find some good flowers. All right, I think up there in that platform is where the petroglyphs are. Guess I'll have to climb those stairs, huh? More picnic tables. Once again, there's hiking everywhere. If you're a hiker, you want to come here. Trails everywhere just bring a lot of water. I bet people get lost out here. Talking about ancient tribes, dart throwers. The petroglyphs were made by ancient tribes up there. All right, guess I'll climb a set of steps, huh? There's some of them right there. Ooh, those are steep. Okay, now I can read these. I went to school for this. That one says, watch this video on RV or TV. Right there, look at that. They had YouTube back then. <laughs> Who knows? If I'm sure some of it's ancient. But they didn't have a platform up here. I wonder how they... They just must have climbed up and started uh, carving the rock. Yeah. 
Get the camera up a little higher. Yep, right there it says RV or TV. You can see the guy watching it on the computer. Looks like a foot. All these people are taking selfies. Okay, there you go. Here's your petroglyphs here at Valley of Fire State Park. Not too bad, kind of felt hurried, couldn't uh, really check it out very long, people were waiting. Oh well, 4,000 year old petroglyphs. Alright, let's head back to the road, we'll start making our way out of the valley here. Yeah, if you're going to try to camp here, make sure you make a reservation. Because this place is packed. Even on early weekday mornings. But what a pretty drive this morning anyway, though. We got to see uh, Echo Bay, the Redstone uh, rest area, and then drive through the valley here of fire. There's another road by the visitor center that you can go way up over the mountain. It goes back several miles, and there's a bunch of hiking trails. I did that a couple years ago. Too many people this trip. Maybe I'll try to get a campsite here in the future sometime. I bet the stargazing would be perfect. Right, here's our other entrance. Like I said earlier when I came in, that's the first time I ever seen the other end when they had somebody in the booth. It was always you put money in an envelope. Now this end you always paid. Gotta let the guy see the ticket. He's waving me through. Thank you. They're lined up. I've even seen limousines driving out through here. Only in Vegas. <laughs> okay, we're going to climb right back out of this valley and head over to I-15. Yeah, there would never be spring flowers in here. Maybe a couple here or there. Just too desolate. For me, this is kind of a quiet time for travel. Because the rest of the country, it's still thawing out. There's still snow in a lot of places. So the actual road trips won't start to about the end of April. Now that the weather's starting to break, I'll start doing more videos up around here. And also in April, there is a 10-day trip planned for Utah, clear up to Salt Lake City. So that'll be coming up here in a couple weeks on our VR TV. Also next week, I'm going down through Prescott, down to Phoenix. Going to be filming a car show at Lake Pleasant. Going to camp there. 
Plus, we don't know what else we're going to do. <laughs> Still springtime. But the long summer journey will start roughly right at the end of April. Chances are it'll be more like uh, first or second week of May. Then our Veer TV will be on the road all summer. Gonna even be back in Sturgis this year, 2024 Sturgis. That's first uh, part of August. Be all kinds of trips planned. We haven't even started yet. See, there's people even hiking out here. All right, right up here, there's a truck stop. Now, off to the left, all around in here, it's kind of interesting. Over the last few years, they have built massive, and I mean massive solar farms. There are solar panels everywhere out in this neck of the woods. They also have off-road racing. There's all kinds of stuff around Vegas. You just never know. There's some of the solar farms. As far as you can see, a lot of square miles of them. And off that direction is Mesquite, Nevada. That's where you're heading up towards uh, Utah. Out of Vegas, down there, there's that truck stop. Been there a long time. And more solar farms straight across I-15 there. Even looks like a little uh, rain might be brewing up. But you gotta love the desert. Almost the entire state of Nevada, it's all desert. Pretty place. Fun trip today. We're going to jump back on I-15 here. Head back towards Vegas. This is just a trip. Take care of a few things. A little business. Straight back into northern Arizona. And like I said, this weekend going to chase some wildflowers maybe. Journey continues. Talk soon. <laughs>